Hey there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I'm raiding the Bits box today. Just kidding. I'm using the whole darn sprue, and I'm going to show you how I made these catwalks with sprues and all kinds of random gobbledygook right after the drop. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this ridiculously stupid huge pile of sprues. And there's more. So many sprues. After, <laughs> After trimming off all them bits, I'm left with all of this plastic. And uh, there are some fantastic, fantastic content creators out there that know what to do with sprues. And this is just a, a small, small taste. Just my version. So, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to really focus on the shapes of these sprues. I found a couple with some really cool ladder-esque shapes along the sides. You can see one side's a little narrower than the other. This narrow side here, I'm trimming off first, I think would make some really, really neat handrails. And so I'm going to trim it off and uh, clean up the pokey bits off of this main structure here. And I think this would really look cool on the side of uh, some of these platforms and catwalks. Ultimately, I only use a little bit of it because the more I use, the less modular the pieces become. And you know me. Well, if you don't, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I love, I love making something that can be used multiple times in multiple ways. I love modularity, and this whole set is super, super modular. Here's that wider side of the sprue, and I think this is just absolutely perfect width for some stairs or some ladders. All kinds of crazy, crazy shapes, but you can see... Uh, within all these crazy shapes, there is a structure there, three beams with a, with a long cross beam. So I'm going to cut all the center, all the strange shaping of sprue. I'm going to cut all of that out, and I'm left with this really nice stilted structure. And this is really how I'm going to start my platforms. I measure the, uh, the lengths of all the what are essentially the feet or legs of my platform. I make sure they're all uh, the same height and we're good to go. Now I look through my sprue pile and I, again, I focus on shapes. I wanna find nice square sections, square sections I can use for the catwalks or platforms. And once I have my square section found, I'm gonna cut it out and then trim all the middle bits out, all of the protruding bumps and and bits and on the edges. And once I have them all cleaned up, I'm gonna grab some very thin craft sticks. The thinner the better, because uh, well, I'll explain. <laughs> the the granny grating that uh, that plastic that I'm going to use for the mesh for the walkways doesn't hold glue very well but the sprue plastic and these woodsies these uh craft sticks do hold glue very well so i'm going to create some plates on the top of the of the sprue square and leave an area in the middle so that i can sandwich the uh the granny grating in between another piece of craft stick and this is going to create a pocket of hot glue that really holds that granny grating into place not because it's actually glued to the grating itself but because i've created uh so much surface area and almost pinched it inside with some glue hopefully the videos will um well hopefully the visuals will explain it to you a little better with my cross bracing glued across the top I turn to the granny grating and cut a piece to fit just inside. Looking good. Now is when I lay that hot glue down 
on the edge and on the insides of the edge of that granny grating. And I'm going to sandwich the two uh, sticks with that hot glue and the granny grating in the center. And that is going to lock everything into place. I know there's an easy way to do this with uh, other glue types, but uh, I don't like to get messy. I like to use what I have, and what I have is hot glue. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, similar with a, a piece across the middle. That's just because this, uh, this square was a little too long, and the, the grating, the mesh, wasn't holding up to the weight of a miniature. There's a finished panel and it's looking great. I decided I wanted a, a really long walkway, so I'm gonna take two of these panels and glue them together. And this works really well with my set of legs. A little super glue and super glue accelerant gets the legs in place. And then I'm gonna go back to the same uh, sprues some of the off-cut pieces. I'm going to use the off-cut pieces to uh, glue in bracings, and that's just going to keep everything standing up uh, straight and 90 degrees and giving the piece some um, structure. The original intention was no bases. I wanted just the catwalks, and that way I could put them down on whatever kind of board I had for them, and I could use them in anything however <laughs> they proved to just be a little too structurally unsure and so later on i will decide that they do in fact need to be based here's a set of stairs i was working on ultimately i did two sets of stairs i would have loved to have done more but <laughs> this was incredibly frustrating to make the the piece that i hoped would uh, make it easy really didn't <laughs> it didn't make it easy it did uh, make for a nice stairway after the fact but easy it was not here's that piece I was talking about trimmed off of the edge of that uh, first sprue and I glue it on an angle uh, the height of which matches the other walkways Add some bracing, much like I did the other walkways. The real issue was coming up with some set of stair or step. I like my stairs to be functional, unless it's some kind of diorama piece. And these were not meant to be diorama pieces. I tried many different things and failed at all of them, and ultimately ended up going really simple, finding um, loops of similar thickness and I believe I ended up cutting the other half of the of the length for it so I when I thought I had two stairs it only ended up being just one and then gluing those individual loops onto the stairs to create a rudimentary step it works the mini sit on it it does not look like it should work but it does <laughs> And I'm, I'm very thankful. Here I am <laughs> gluing everything down to bases. They were just too flimsy. The legs were cracking. The, they were breaking from the supports. And it was clear to me that everything needed to just be squared up and glued down nice and proper on some basing. So I went with some thin but sturdy uh, card stock. I believe it was from a bulk macaroni and cheese package. Anyway, it's, it's fairly sturdy and thick. Um, it does, it does lose some structure when I start to, uh, add glue and flocking and things of, uh, like that. But I, uh, I did manage to straighten some bases up with a trick and I'll explain later on. Here you can see I've, uh, glued it to the bases, trimmed nice and close. I've added, 
the fender washers for weight, particularly on the smaller pieces. I didn't want them knocking over and I wanted them to hold up to miniatures off to the edges and sides. I would decorate the insides with cut and torn card, giving them the look of like a, a ruin or a, a rusted out uh, stronghold or structure so that the sloppiness of my <laughs> my work could be explained away. <laughs> and then I had my hands on uh, some old scatter that didn't work out. Here's some barrels that I made that uh, didn't quite work out and I thought this was the perfect chance to get rid of them <laughs> and include them in another project. And this was gonna fill out the insides of these structures um, still leave a path so they're movable underneath, but they're uh, they're a little a little bit more an interactive piece now, and I, I'm really starting to like the way they turn out. I do a coating of white PVA and flock the craft sand, and then I used some of my foam crates I had cut up and left over, along with some wooden blocks to mimic kind of the look of crates. Once they're all down, I go over with the, the matte Mod Podge and the black paint to coat and seal the foam. And then I took them outside when Michigan gave me a couple minutes of decent weather. <laughs> and I got them primed up in black. Boy, I'm moving quick. Stop it. Slow down. Holy cow. <laughs> Burnt sienna for the wood. Dry brushed with a honey brown. I'm going to hit my barrels with an award blue again. It's funny that they were blue. I primed them black and now I'm making them blue again. This citron green I got on sale. And when I pulled it out and started painting it, it mimics the army painter slime really well. If you want a cheap slime, that citron green is amazing. I ran out of gunmetal. <laughs> Sterling silver it is. Let's do it up. Uh, dry brush the uh, bars and the grating. Uh, make, sh make sure I paint the panels well. <laughs> Here's the dry brush of honey brown on the wood. And uh, at the, oh, I uh, hit the groundwork with the Mississippi mud at one point. And I'm not liking these pieces right now. I am not liking them. I don't want to flock them, which would normally clean up some of that, uh, that ground issue. Here I am dry brushing the barrels with that same sterling silver. That works dynamite. Those barrels look fantastic after that metallic dry brush. So here's, uh, this went a long way to fixing this ground cover is my black wash. I just smother it, darken everything up with that black wash. Now I mentioned the groundwork curling. You can see on the very edge of this piece, I have glued down another length of sprue to force the ground straight. That was super effective in repairing the uh, the curling on the edges of these pieces. I certainly couldn't do it to all sides because I wanted certain sides to be passable. But on those sides when I could, I glued that length down and it really did flatten those bases out. So if you have a similar situation happening, I find that uh, that really helped me out. But uh, that was this particular project. I don't know if you've got something that lines up exactly, but you never know. I wanted to, the bases still look like a mess. <laughs> so I wanted to flock them a bit, but not with like a full on grass, like a spattering of weeds and clumps, but I am desperately low on clumps. <laughs> That, that sounds crazy out of context. Anyway, I'm low on clumps and uh, I decide to make a few. So I, <laughs> I take my rope, cut it, cut it into little lengths, and then glue bundles of three, uh, three strands of, of different lengths. I hot glue that down on a parchment paper and you can pull it up rough and pull those strands apart and then glue it down. And it makes a, a fairly fairly passable <laughs> clump not bad I stick it in between some of the really rough areas and then I take what few little uh, 
little clumps I have from the store. And boy, they look a whole lot better than what I've made. Well, maybe not better, just different, right? <laughs> and you can see one of mine with one of theirs, and it looks fantastic. And so I just start dropping those all over the piece, looking to fix that groundwork. And uh, I'm pretty happy with what I pulled off. These aren't going to win any awards, but they're very playable. They're super modular, and they don't look too bad after uh, after that wash muddied up the ground. And then I got it in my head, let's do some rust. I don't want to use my good expensive paints, so let's see what I can do with just a simple paint effect. So I hit my chestnut brown, my apple barrel chestnut brown, and I just start uh, dabbing it along the edges and where any of those bullet holes are that I put in some of those panels. I put it around the rivets and on the top bits and pieces. And I really start to like the way it looks. And I really start selling myself on these pieces now. I go a little crazy. <laughs> I go a little crazy with the chestnut brown and I lay it on uh, <laughs> pretty thick. And then I go back in with Apple Barrel's Harvest Orange, and you're gonna uh, tip tap the middle bits of your chestnut brown areas. And this is gonna give your rust uh, a bit of dimension. It's gonna look a lot worse in certain places and then fade out to that brown. And you can see I have gone nuts. It's all over the place. But boy, oh boy, when it's done, I love it. Uh, I wasn't sure about this project midway through, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I think it makes an absolute killer addition to my small batch of sci-fi terrain. What do you think? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments if you do like it and you like this video, smash that like button, please. It would really help me out. You want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Do you feel like uh, I've earned myself a coffee as a nice thank you? I would really appreciate you smashing that super thanks button. And if you want to help the channel out in the long term, become a member. Get emojis and uh, uh, access to my pen and paper game. Uh, along with the Discord server, check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you like this project and you feel like subscribing to see even more cool content like this. As always, like each other, love each other, and craft on. There he is, fitting right in there. Avoid that slime. Don't get in that slime. Ooh, he's gonna try and pass on this side. No! Oh, you step in the slime! You step in the slime, you're gonna die! <laughs> oh, these ended up being some really fun pieces. You can see those, uh, those blocks along with the fender washer really weighed everything down well. Here's the stairs working. I know they look like they didn't work, but <laughs> they sure did. Thank you so much, everyone.